Welcome to The Clickdown. I'm your host, Steve Beals, and today we're going to dive into the world of Citrix and app packaging. I'm lucky enough to be joined again today by Yashu Aurora to discuss this exciting space. Yashu, welcome back to The Clickdown. Thank you so much, Steve. It's always so exciting to start my Friday with a podcast with yourself. <laughs> Thanks yourself. so much. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm going to dive right in. So, you know, app packaging is really one of these technology areas where I personally haven't spent much time. Um, so before we dive into mm-hmm. anything that Citrix has done recently in the space, can you kind of give us just a quick app packaging 101? Yep, sure, Steve. So, um, l- like like yourself, we have very few customers as well who are using app packaging at the moment. Uh, people must be aware of App V, which was uh, traditionally Microsoft's signature mm-hmm. app packaging format. App packaging in itself uh, can be viewed as another way of delivering application to end user, uh, pretty much like uh, an MSI or EXE. Now, what an app package is, is uh, we bind the required files or components into a single package. And then we uh, stream the package or download the package onto the end user's okay. device. Uh, so uh, like customers might know, App V is going end of life in 2026. So the purpose of this podcast today is to talk about MSIX, which is uh, supposed to be... a uh, the descendant or like uh, the alternative uh, for App V that uh, Microsoft has developed and also app attached disks and other packaging formats that we are supporting within the Citrix format. We'll speak about the advantages of using these app packaging formats, how you can deliver them to any endpoint that has a Citrix VDA installed on them and uh, why you may want to pilot this technology and okay. like play awesome. with it. Awesome. So I'm, I'm, you know, curious with our potential and what we're going to do in this space and, you know, kind of, you know, hear from you, uh, kind of curious about this. What, what type of customers do you see as like early adopters of this technology? So um, now we would first need to dive into the advantages of app packaging and then sort of uh, take that into what kind of customers it can help and what kind of customers we are seeing uh, as adopting this early. So uh, like the key advantages is that, you know, uh, if you move over to app packaging, it becomes very easy for you to manage application updates because uh, you have a source, which could be an Azure file share or a UNC path where you're hosting all of these application packages. And basically you have to only attack that single source to do any kind of updates uh, or, you know, do even removals if your uh, licenses have lapsed or because of a certain change in business strategy, you've decided to do away with certain applications. So it's a single place where you can uh, make these updates or edits and uh, control accesses from that single place. So it simplifies your deployment uh, immensely. Uh, What it also does is uh, on your endpoints, your endpoints are left completely clean, wherein these packages are not interacting with the OS and any profiles that you need to clear out. uh, It becomes very easy to clear out those profiles because there's nothing itself installed Mm -hmm. on the endpoint. It also, in doing so, reduces uh, admin and support costs. You can think of any kind of IT expenses that are involved in uh, image management can be reduced altogether. So let us imagine there is a customer who has 40 different functions and every function basically needs a different application. What uh, customers did traditionally was they would have 40 different images and each of those images would be bulky enough to include and install all applications that that particular function might need. Let's say the finance team needs a certain kind of expense management tool. We would install that on the image. And then all 40 of those images would need management or dedicated professionals looking after those images, uh, let alone all of the storage costs that are involved in hosting those images. Uh, And now with app packaging, uh, we've seen certain customers come down from 40 images to Mm -hmm. a single image and use app packages to basically uh, have that distinction uh, across functions, wherein functions can be given access to a certain package, uh, which isn't installed on the image. So a single image is used for all of them and app packages to do whatever distinction uh, that is required uh, amidst functions. So uh, 
in terms of customers we've seen uh customers in the finance space or uh internet service providers that are uh quickly adopting to these uh who always wanted like lean images or saw a lot of these functions and uh want to be able to basically right. outsource their app life cycle management altogether uh and also use uh like the citrix paradigm to uh do any kind of security and access controls uh also there are a third kind of customers which were using third party tools or third party consoles to manage application packages they are also trying to use citrix so that they can do away with those third party consoles altogether and use just the citrix web studio to uh manage the whole host of packages because with citrix web studio not only are you being able to deliver app packages with that same like workflow but also all other kinds of applications so basically it will be a one stop shop for any kind of application format that you're delivering okay. to your end users awesome so so as you were you know talking about msix and app attach and um things like that the thing that clicked in my head is app layering as well so Mm -hmm. does does app layering play in this space because obviously that's our product right msix is a microsoft product like where Mm -hmm. does app layering fit into this uh that's a very interesting question and also it leads me into what we have on our future roadmap uh so yes uh app layering is citrix's signature format at the moment there are customers who use app layering they need an entirely different mm-hmm. console like the app layering console to manage all of those layers uh we've seen a lot of innovation in that space as well and uh that is an excellent uh format in itself which like uh may look like app packaging but it's got its nuances and you know advantages and disadvantages so uh what we are doing and how uh we are sort of uh we found a synergy with them is that uh there is a certain kind of application layer which is called yep. elastic layers what we want to do is be able to deliver elastic layers with the same format so we want to uh expand uh the posh sdk commandlets or we want to enhance like brokers and vdas to be able to read those elastic layers uh and we want to be able to publish elastic layers from web studio itself so in the present workflow we can uh deliver app v msix app attach and now a uh, fourth format which will be a surprise nugget that we can cover later but um uh by the end of this year we will also be able to deliver elastic awesome. app okay. layers using uh okay. using web studio uh for more on elastic uh, uh app layers and you know app layering in general uh dan yeah. might be a great uh yeah, person absolutely. like we, we we've done previous podcasts oh. with like rob zalowski and dan on that but it's one of those things that as you were talking i was like that's what popped in my head was app layering right so and and i always come up with the surprise question anyway so it's <laughs> <laughs> i like to keep everyone on their toes so um so you know when when we think about like the app packaging space and what you know what Citrix is doing what are the most recent changes that we we've come out with Uh the most recent changes uh would be in the past we were being able to deliver app v msix and app attached disks to multi session desktops as seamless applications. Uh what we mean by that is uh if we have a multi session desktop uh users will be able to uh use them as published applications or go to workspace and launch a certain application package which could be either of these three formats now we are also being able to deliver these applications to single session or persistent desktops as desktop okay. applications so uh for a user uh, how this would manifest is uh, when they launch their session they would see it on their start menu or uh like you could find it within uh the windows applications it will be almost like a, a natively installed application uh, wherein you can click a shortcut and launch the application in your session uh that is the most recent changes and uh within the space now we are trying to enhance this further to improve like uh session launch times and app performance in general uh also like uh in 2308 which is uh a little uh which takes us a little behind uh we changed from uh the double hop scenario to a single mm-hmm. hop scenario wherein uh we started seeing improvement in app performance so apps took longer to load when uh customers were uh launching them when we were double hop and now 
uh, since we are single hop, uh, the app launches almost instantly when you click on the icon, uh, both uh, in workspace and on the desktop okay, itself. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, that, that sounds like a, a a great feature enhancement there. So, um, so when, when we think about the admin side of things, um, you know, what what should our admins keep in mind when they're starting to use these, you know, and pilot these changes with mm-hmm. uh, with Citrix functional levels and things of that nature. All right. So um, uh, what's most exciting is now uh, it is also available on-prem. So we have these features available both in DAS and on-prem. Only on-prem, they'd have to be on uh, 2311CR or uh, the LTSR that is coming uh, ahead (laughs) of us. Uh, and uh, there are certain prerequisites that uh, admins need to keep in mind to be able to play with this technology, which is uh, admins must keep in mind that we are not in the packaging mm-hmm. business. So any packages that they plan to deliver using uh, Citrix or using Web Studio, they'd have to create those packages in a tool outside of the Citrix uh, environment. So they'd have to use the uh, Microsoft app packaging tool or any third party tool. Uh, we partnered with AppCure mm-hmm. recently, which is also able to uh, package uh, like certain applications uh, by uh, completely isolating them. So packages would have to be created outside of the Citrix workflow, and these packages have to have valid certificates. Uh, so once uh, like admins create these packages, they can host them onto a source and then uh, use the workflow as is documented uh, in the various uh, like documentation that's available on the Citrix website. But yes, packages would have to be created outside. Um, admins also need to take care of the minimum functional level of a delivery group that they are delivering these application packages to, details of which are both published in Web Studio mm-hmm. and can be learned uh, in our documentation. If they are trying to deliver to server 2019, uh, they must keep in mind that they would have to have side loading enabled. Uh, and then, you know, it would work just as expected with uh, server 2019. Uh, for using all of these features, uh, they must have a 2311 or a more recent VDAs. And on the VDA, they should have the Citrix Appy personalization component enabled. Uh, which is something which was true for uh, using app packages in general in the past as well. Uh, so I think on a high level, these are the prerequisites that would have to be kept in mind uh, to be able to play with this technology or, you know, use uh, these features that we've developed right, recently. Awesome. Yeah, you mentioned AppCure before, which is was was new to me. One of my colleagues, Stephen Gallagher, has been, you know, updating me on some of that. And that 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 actually, what, mm-hmm. what they do looks really interesting as well. So. I'm excited to uh, you know to see wh- how how that starts to play out in our in our space. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've uh, we've started to uh, partner with newer vendors. AppCure uh, is one of our uh, newest partners, wherein we are trying to use their console and uh, make it like a single click experience within their console as well, uh, wherein you can use AppCure to uh, package applications, uh, and they've shown. Uh, very like it's very promising mm-hmm. uh, their console to be able to package applications. We've been able to package DOS applications, uh, you know, games like Doom, and uh, also like uh, Process Monitor, etc. And then within the AppCure console, you can click a single button to be able to access your um, Citrix configuration and deliver to a certain source, and then use the Citrix Web Studio to manage accesses on that source. So for us, it's going to be like we want to provide our customers as much choice uh, as is needed to help them, you know, move away from, uh, let's say, App V because right. it's going end of life, or use any uh, any application packaging format of their choice and uh, use tools that they might be used to, and continue to be able to use them with right. Citrix. Awesome. Um, so the last question on the admin <laughs> side is, you know, are, are we able to um, update? like an MSIX or an app attach app within Citrix DAS, you know, do users need to close the applications or can it be updated as they're in it? Like how, how would that process work? So at the moment we cannot do, uh, in session updates, uh, 
an admin would be able to update uh, all of the application packages that are available in a certain source. Uh, but for the user to get the most updated version, the user would have to restart the application. Uh, so that is that, but uh, we can work with users to see if uh, it would be possible at a later stage, or it could be something that we would consider on our roadmap and do discovery for, uh, whether we want to do like in-session mm -hmm. updates or refresh an application while it is in use. Uh, there might be security implications right. for that as well, but uh, it's it's something we are open to okay. exploring. Awesome. And, you know, last question I really had um, was really around, you know, other app packaging formats, so MSIX, AppAttach, you already mentioned AppCure. Are there any other formats that are, uh, are available or that are going to be coming down the road? Yeah, I mean, this is the first time we are uh, we are discussing this on a public forum. But uh, in the future, we'll be supporting Liquidware's uh, Flex App awesome. format. Uh, so at the moment, uh, it is open for private tech preview in DAS. So if there are customers in DAS who are already exploring uh, Liquidware's uh, Flex App technology, uh, they can reach out to me and uh, I can toggle it on for their tenant and they can use uh, the very familiar web studio to uh, deliver uh, the Flex App. Uh, one prerequisite for that would be they would have to have the Flex App agent installed on their VDA. But uh, the workflow looks pretty much the same for okay. MSIX, AppAttach and Flex App. Uh, and uh, now that we've covered that, I'd also want to quickly go through. Uh, so within FlexApp, what we've seen as an advantage is uh, it claims to have a higher compatibility. So you can package more number of applications. And uh, there are a lot of other innate advantages, which uh, we will possibly, you know, publish a white paper for at a later stage when uh, when we're a little more mature with this whole um, and see more adoption across awesome. customers. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I gotta tell you, I love when uh, we can drop new information on the podcast. So <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that, those are my favorite podcasts. So um, that, that, that's about all the time we have, you know, Yashu, but you know, I want to thank you okay. again for joining me. It's, it's always great having you on. Um, and I'm, I'm eager to kind of continue exploring, you know, this, this field, because it's, like I said, it's, it's relatively something that I haven't jumped into before. It's, I think there's a lot of exciting updates coming and work that we're doing. So, mm -hmm. and, you know, anyone interested in learning more about where we play in the space obviously our product documentation is pretty comprehensive uh, we do have some tech briefs on msix and app attach on tech zone um, and again yeah she mentioned if you're interested in uh, getting into the private tech preview for the uh, uh, liquidware let us let us know reach out to her um, and with that i'd like to thank everyone for tuning in until next time this has been the clickdown <laughs>